person who is responsible for the account, okay? So if I'm going to send a video phone to my child at the University of Michigan, um, I am responsible for that account. So the person's information that goes in here, the customer information we ask for social security number, date of birth, name, we want that customer to pick their username and password, okay? We want that customer's email address, and I cannot tell you how important it is that we get the customer's email address, not yours. I understand, we all understand, we wanna help our customers because we want it to be a great experience. So there will be a temptation for you to put your email address there. So if we have to get a hold of them to fix something, you wanna fix it for them. In most cases, you're just gonna call them up and get the information because you can't fix it for them. So it's very, very important, not just for fixing orders, but for ongoing communications that we have the customer's email address. This is all online. We do everything online and we do everything through email. So we, sh we continue to send them updates on the status of their shipment or the status of their order. When they're active, if there's changes, if there's enhancements, if there's other features, we will push that out to the email addresses that we have in our, in our system. So it's very, very, very important that the address, the email address that we get and the contact phone number is that of the customers. They need to pick their username and password because as we'll go uh, in a couple of minutes into the customer portal, that is where they go to make any kind of changes, any kind of updates, or manage their features. So you want to make sure for the account creation, that's the very first one, that is the person who owns the account, that is the person who's responsible for the account, and please make sure we get their information, not yours. We already have your information, and there's a process that if we can't get a hold of the customer, when we have their contact information, we will send an email to the, to the uh, sponsoring rep, uh, or try to get a hold of the sponsoring rep if we can't resolve it directly with the customer. Okay, so that's the first section of checking out. Second one is the 911 address. And we call it the 911 address because it's not a service address. For those of you that fill out local long distance forms, we ask you for the service address. That's the physical location of, the device, of your home. That's where you get your phone service from because again, it's a, it's a fixed line that's attached to your house. There is no, the concept isn't there for digital phone service. It's really a 911 address, in other words, yeah, in case there's an emergency, we hope that never happens. In case there's an emergency, where do you want that emergency service to show up? So your customer has to fill in that 911, and this is the one thing that we use to qualify whether we can give your customer service or not. It's not whether we offer a local number. That's their choice. We have customers in Alaska. We don't offer numbers in Alaska. But the 911 address, we can offer it, and they don't mind having a California number or a Washington number or a number that is local to where their family or friends are. So a local number is not the reason why we say we can offer you service or we cannot offer you service. A local number is something that your customer picks and says, do I want this number or do I want a different number? And that's purely their choice. The only time we will tell your customers we don't have service is if we cannot give them 911 service. It's a FCC rule, it's a federal law for all digital phone companies. We have to provide 911 service because again, in case of emergency, and we hope it never happens, in case of emergency, we have to be able to, the Public Safety Commission has to be able to send an ambulance or a police or a fire truck to that place of, of, uh, of uh, residence or that location, wherever that, so we will ask you for a 911 address, where do you want this to go? It doesn't have to match the shipping address. It doesn't have to match the billing address. And if you remember on that first screen that we just showed, and I, I should have touched on it, we don't ask for a customer's address. We ask for a social security number, we ask for date of birth, we ask for a name, username, password, email, contact, things like that. We do not ask for a customer's address. So on the 911 address, we're asking you where do you want this to go in case something happens, and it can be a separate address than your shipping address, okay? The next page after that is your T's and C's. I believe it's your T's and C's, yep. So a customer has to acknowledge them and accept them. If they don't, check it off. We cannot process the order and we won't process the order. So they have to accept all the T's and C's that are listed on there and we try to highlight everything. Early termination fee in case they break their two-year contract, which is standard. We actually do something that the cell phone industry is looking at doing and very reluctant to do. We actually prorate your early termination fee. So for every month that the customer is online with us, we lower the early termination fee. So unlike cell phones, if you've got a two-year contract with a cell phone company, if you quit in one month one, It just, 
the right thing to do, but you know, a lot of companies won't do that. If you quit in month one, they'll charge you 150 bucks or 200 bucks, depending on how expensive your device is. If you quit in month 22 of 24, they still charge you 150 or 200 dollars, depending on the device you chose. Now, you've paid them hundreds of dollars in those 22 months, but they don't give you a break. So what we do is we automatically give you a prorated discount in case that customer has to leave for whatever reason. There's a difference between them leaving in month six versus leaving in month 12, okay? So that's something we do. We explain that in the T's and C's. There's obviously E911 and 911 um, language in there. We want them to understand what they're getting. Most customers get E911, some get basic 911, so we want them to understand what they're getting so they have to check it off. If they do not, they're not gonna get service, okay? Um, from that standpoint, then we go to the shipping address. Shipping address, again, doesn't have to match your 911 address. It can, but it doesn't have to. Shipping address is where do you want that equipment shipped? That's it. And if you've looped through and you've ordered multiple devices, it's gonna ask you by device, where do you want this one shipped? Where do you want that one shipped? You can use the same address or you can use a different address. The biggest caveat is you want to remember if you're getting a video phone, somebody has to be there to sign for it. So if you're gonna be at work and your neighbor's home, ask your neighbor to sign for it or ship it to your work if you can sign for it there, okay? After that is the billing information. That's really your credit card information because everything is billed online, everything is billed via credit card. Um, again, the address for your credit card doesn't have to match your 911 address, doesn't have to match your shipping address. It can be a different address. So theoretically, I can be buying a video phone for a relative who lives in Chicago, but I want it shipped to, you know, Des Moines, Iowa, because he's there for vacation, and I can use my credit card out of Michigan, so I've got three different addresses. So the credit card information is just your payment information. It says, give us the credit card, give us the name, and give us the address of where your credit card is billed. This is a bank security rule, and we follow all the rules. The credit, when we send that transaction through, we send the address as well, and the bank, before they approve it, We'll look at that address and say, is this really the right customer? Is the, does their address match where I send the bill to? If it does and, the, then the, uh, and they got the amount of money, they'll approve it. If it does, we'll, we'll get a reject back and we'll display that says the information is incorrect. Please enter it again. Okay. The one rule is, remember we talked about at the beginning, the first page is the account holder, the person responsible for the account. That person has to be the same person as a credit card. So I can't put it in my name and use my friend's credit card, okay? That is the, that's the other rule. Your credit card name has to match the account holder's name because that person is responsible, and your credit card address that you give us has to match what's on the bank records of where your credit card gets sent to, your, where your credit card bill gets sent to, okay? Next page is your order summary. So as you see, we've gone through four different sections pretty quick when you put all the information. The next one is your order summary. Review the data to make sure everything's still there. Hit that submit button. If you don't hit the submit button or if your customer doesn't hit the submit button, the order doesn't go anywhere. It's not complete until you do this. We're just putting it here to make sure that you're okay with it or your customer's okay with everything that they ordered and everything is accurate. Okay, so we're gonna go through a couple of summary screens here as far as essential steps for a successful order. So credit card name and account name have to match. We don't use PO boxes because we can't ship the PO boxes, obviously in 911 services and some place you're gonna send it to a PO box. So there's no PO boxes for anything. We need a valid email address and please make sure it's the customer's email address. And when you're ordering a video phone, make sure there is somebody there to sign for it. The ATAs will leave at your place of residence. If that's the address you give us. The video phones, we will not. FedEx or UPS, I think we use FedEx, will make three attempts. They'll leave those little stickers on your door if you're not home or the shipping address that you gave us, there's nobody there. They'll leave that thing, they'll make three attempts. They'll hold it at the shipping station for another seven days and they'll return it to us. If they return it to us, we cancel the account out. So they're gonna have to start all over again. So you wanna make sure you got someone at that shipping address that can sign for it, okay? If you're transferring a number, keys to remember, make sure we have coverage and we'll let you know through the process if we have coverage or not. We are expanding that coverage area as I mentioned earlier. Two to four weeks for the transfer to complete. We will take care of everything. Please do not call the current provider and tell them you're transferring away that you want your line disconnected because they'll disconnect it immediately. And the other thing is make sure there is no pick freezes. Uh, on some companies and some places will allow a customer put a freeze on their local line 